from a low of half a percent to a high of 5%. And that was in good nature um, chocolate lure and good nature peanut butter lure. In addition, we did test Skippy peanut, peanut butter at 5% citric acid. And this is because even though we don't use Skippy in our a A24s, a lot of people use Skip Skippy peanut butter in their snap traps, their Victor snap traps. So we also tested that at 5%. Um, after two weeks, uh, what we did was we um, look, we measured the amount of test bait eaten. We subtracted that from the amount of control bait eaten from, by that slug and divided it by the weight of the slug because larger slugs ate more bait. Um, any slugs that did not feed this entire time were discounted from the analysis. We then took that data and we ran a one-way ANOVA followed by a two-piece and we came up with these results. I'm going to spend some time on this graph. But basically on the y-axis, you're looking at the difference between the test and control being eaten, um, uh, standardized by the slug weight, and that zero, that dotted line through the center, zero, indicates that when values fall at zero, both the test and control bait were eaten at, at the same rate. They were, they, neither one was, per, per, they were both, uh, they're both consumed at the same level. When you see values above zero, it means that the um, test bait was avoided and the control bait was preferred. And of course, values below that line would indicate that the test bait was preferred, that is the bait with the citric acid, and the control bait was avoided. Um, the letters above each group show which groups are significantly different from one another. And when we look at the x-axis, we can start to look at the, the success of the different kinds of bait that we tested. So starting out with the least effective baits, you're going to look at your lower left. We had half a percent of citric acid in the good nature lure and 5% citric acid in peanut butter. Now, a lot of these values fell at about zero. And the gray boxes, just to let you know, are showing you the range of the data. And 50% of that data falls within the gray box. The asterisks are means, and the solid lines are the medians. Anyway, for those two, there was no real significant difference between um, the test and control bait. The slugs ate, them, uh, ate both readily. So um, we consider that a failure. Okay, uh, the second group uh, was moderately effective, and that was the 2 and 3% citric acid base. Um, but the most effective ones were at 5% citric acid, and that's um, at the far end. And the one circled in red was the most effective bait, and that was a good nature um, uh, lure, peanut, um, chocolate lure with 5% citric acid. Um, we did, ex uh, just one more thing, um, we expected the peanut butter with the 5% to also be effective, but what we found is um, it didn't mix very well, it tended to separate. Um, that's as, as opposed to the um, Good Nature Rat Bait, which was well homogenized. So then the next step at this point was to see whether the bait that we found um, was similarly, uh, you know, it repelled slugs, but did rats like it? And here's Tyler. All right, thanks. I'm going to have to fly here. She loves her slugs. So, yeah, so I'll talk about the other three trials that we did. The first one with the rodents. Uh, we worked with Dr. Aaron Shields with the National Wildlife Research Center in Fort Collins. Uh, to see if rodents, mice in this example, were uh, deterred by the addition of citric. He pulled some mice, some wild caught field mice in, uh, did some studies, and no, they were not deterred, basically. Uh, there was no preference between the mouse chow, the control bait, or the test bait. So that's great news. So then we came to the field here, and in January at Paul Lake Natural Area Reserve, we did a trial with rodents. So we put 65 paired sites with two Victor snap traps at each site. We don't use Victor snap traps for control anymore, but they're great for a trial like this because we can actually go and get the carcass so we know what we caught. So we put one trap baited with the standard chocolate bait and one with the citric bait about three feet apart. We checked that a couple times for two weeks and we captured 35 rats with the control bait and 39 with the citric acid bait. So it showed that rats didn't, uh, weren't deterred by the addition of citric acid at 5%. So that's great, so we'll keep building on to the ALPs and how long can we get these ALPs to last. So in June 2018, we worked with Good Nature and we got them to develop uh, 1,300 ALPs for us with citric acid. In the picture, that's the ones with the black label. The orange labels are the standard ALPs. We did a four month checking interval and we got three times per site, so we did one whole year of checks for these. We ended up with 2006 traps that we were able to run over a one year period. And so that's quite a, quite a bit, a uh, thousand with the citric and about a thousand with the regular bait. So, large sample size. So, what did we find? Well, 
The Citric bait had way better longevity than the bait, than the control bait alone. So you'll see the traps with 8% left on the y-axis, and then we've broken these up into two time periods, under and over 100 days. The orange is the control baits, and the blue are the ones with citric acid. So what this is, is the amount of bait remaining, or the, bait, the percentage of traps of bait remaining when we come back. So we're not measuring how much is in each ALP or anything, we're not weighing those. It's just how many traps at that site still had bait. And so we had a standardized method of looking for the aluminum foil pouch, and if, it, if we could see that, it didn't have bait. And so basically we were able to show over 100 days that 57% of the traps with the regular bait still had, but that means that half of them were without uh, bait. So if you only have half of your grid working at uh, over 100 days, you're really limited in your effectiveness. And so with the citric acid, we showed that we were able to get 86% of the traps remaining with bait. So we assume that we're getting much greater benefit. So if you look at that a little more, there were a couple things we found that were significant. The bait type, the, the number of days that it was checked, and the site. Um, if you look at the um, projected uh, numbers, the citric bait treatment, it would be predicted to be 80% in 130 days, and the plain bait is 40% uh, from our data. So there are some additional factors here that uh, we would also like to look at. Uh, we know that there's things like mice and ants and other insects that could be affecting the bait. And we don't know in a controlled environment what the ALP, how many would still have bait after that interval either. So, you know, we're probably pretty close up there with that 80%. So what's next? Well, now we're going to use the citric, the 5% citric acid in all of our good nature traps. We have about 2,000 of them. Uh, we will be doing a six-month checking interval, which is amazing. I remember when we were doing two-week checks for snap traps. So, you know, this is fantastic. So we're going to keep monitoring that. Uh, we'll use our tracking tunnels uh, as our independent monitoring method to keep seeing if we're being effective uh, on a landscape level. And we would really like to develop an ant repellent bait, so if anybody's interested in that, uh, hit me up. So I'd like to thank Steph Joe and all the other team with the Army program. Um, and if you guys have any questions, thanks.